Oh wait, no, no, we're streaming. Hold on. Not, not next time. Not peace. Honestly, like, I forgot I was streaming. I was just rambling. And I'm like, what have I just said for the past 10 minutes? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got the Corvette here. I'm going to switch its parts over to the Veneno. Let's go McLaren. Even though the McLaren's pretty hard, this is a challenge for me to drive for some reason. It's something with how it's set up in the suspension and stuff. There's the gold line one. It's got slightly more juice. Let's put the slightly more juiced one into, into play. We'll just leave it as is. All right, we're going for the bag. The whole point of this, the whole reason why we're doing this is so we can buy, I guess I could show you guys here. Coeniseg. Co Coenigseg. This one. That's the way. We need to do two more races. Two more races will get it for us. We want the Regera. Just because it has the most power. It's got 1500 brake horsepower. The top speed's a surplus of 248 miles per hour. The handling's close to expert. What about the McLaren? The McLaren handling close to expert 1014 brake horsepower 279. Yeah, I just want the fastest vehicle. That's all. I've also been destroying things we don't need as far as scrap. Every vehicle has stuff on it. So honestly, I think all this can go to scrap. Because we're going to keep filling up all of our inventory and stuff. And it's going to start getting sent to the mailbox soon. So we might as well process this all. Because every vehicle we have, I think like nine or 10 hyper cars and they all have 320 parts. All these little scrap parts we're getting here, 4,000, 5,000, 6,000. These go into changing the affixes on our, on our gear here. So we can hit select and we can pay to kind of recalibrate these. So if we don't want that, we can make it what we do want. I'd probably get one that's like fully bucks. That would be cool. I don't know if there's a like a soft cap, how many bucks parts you can have or what even the maximum amount of bucks return you could get on a part is. This one, for example, this one has 34.4%. It's modifying our vehicle. Okay, it gives 2.5%. If I were to recalibrate it, I can get 2.7. Okay, it tells you range, 1 to 3%. So 2.7 is pretty close to 3%. And you could you could hyper-tune everything. Everything's tuned once you put parts on it, but you can hyper-tune everything. And you can even go into, like, performance settings. So it gets really kind of crazy. Because, say, like, you do have, like, an all-wheel drive vehicle, but you want to make it, like, a rear-wheel drive. I think they let you do that. I think there's a way to kind of tune the vehicle to handle as if it was a rear wheel drive yeah it'd be very nice to have like a full set of like score breaker nos and then maybe like a full set of fame magnet bucks have like a full bucks like bucks on the uh tires bucks on the engine like every every part and see how high you can get that percentage 34.6% okay. is pretty good though. That's all that. Let's go. $315,000 reward. Brrr, this thing is savage. Are we ready? We ready? Listen to the sound of it. Yes! When I hit the brakes, it goes so stiff. This is gonna be uh, interesting. Wanga Gang. -gang. <clears throat> Excuse me. Wanga Gang. -gang. Take, it to 11. Take it to 11. I do like the way the engine sounds, it sounds really cool.
I don't even want to hit the poles if I can help it. I'll try to even avoid the po Oh, here we go. I was not in control when I hit the NOS and it just threw me sideways. Yeah, oh, he steers kind of a uh, drifty. He's got a little bit of a boat feel. Hold on. Okay, okay. It's just a little different, that's all. It's just a little different. Okay, okay. After this checkpoint, we'll cut left. Nos. We are booking it though, aren't we? I don't know what our top speeds are. Oh my goodness. Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I thought it'd be interesting to um, check the timers and see like what my race times are. They're they're all about 30 minutes, about 34 minutes, I'd say. So if I can beat 34 minutes, I'm doing good. But I'd also like to know like some of my top speeds and know like which vehicles hit in the top. This one here with the turns, come on. It's there, you just, with these types of cars, you gotta commit. And I don't know how it feels, so I don't know what I'm committing to. If I could just get a little taste of it, then I at least know if I need to put it all in there. Pow! Yep! Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, th these cars are meant to be driven with confidence. Ah, uh, come on. That's how you take that turn right now. Right here, go, 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 go. Yeah, I think I'm getting it now. It's kind of like the 9, 918 Spider. I think it was 918. Where it's like, I don't know. It's the, the center of gravity of the vehicle in the turn lines up with the apex from the middle of the vehicle, it feels. This one, I would say, is probably slightly more forward than that. Like, I would say it's more of a forward uh, wheel drive into the turn it feels like with maybe the down pressure the way the force is being exerted on the vehicle through the the wings and stuff like that and the, the spoilers rang again and then you got the elevation changes as well you got to take into account am i going down a hill is one of my tires off the ground What? And then as a as a gamer, I'm also worried about frame rates. You'll see me a lot of the times I go into a turn and I'll brake pretty heavily right before the turn. That's not because I can't take the turn at a high speed. That's because the graphics aren't going to render properly if I do. <laughs> it's not like a cocky thing. It's like this is what happens. Um what the fuck is that guy doing? He must have been on the wrong GPS route. Yeah, um... So, I wonder. I wonder if it's the game engine or my PC or the card or like, I don't... I don't know where it's at, but there... It feels like there's a bottleneck there sometimes. And if I just like, uh... I'm gonna find a vehicle. One of them. I thought it was the Celine at one point, but I don't think it has enough go in it. I'm either going to have to buy a different Celine, because I, I think there is another one. I don't know if it's a Motor Pass exclusive or what. But I want to try to get some of the fastest vehicles I can get on this track. And I want to start setting, setting and breaking some records. <clears throat> I want to be able to turn my own ghost on. That would be cool to race my ghost in this race. Like I want, I want to race like this for each class, like uh, a street racing version of this. Um, I don't know if you could have a long distance drift race. Like I don't even know how that would look. A drag race though, kind of an open drag race, that'd be kind of neat. Cause that would just be bonkers. Like nobody would be able to, con you'd probably be frustrating. <laughs> That's kind of what sounds fun about it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, buddy. 
It's getting all blue. We need to chill, 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 chill. Damn. We might be seeing some weather change here. I'm thinking it may be snow. We're heading towards mountains. Maybe it's snow. Look at this. Ooh. Chew. How are we feeling the classical? I, I hear it coming in and out. Like some of these are really sentimental. So they're like quiet and fluttery. And you're just not gonna hear that over the vehicle. But the vehicle's kind of the soundtrack to the race any to the to the race. Yeah, to the race anyway. I like when the NAS ends, it's like Pachoo. Again. I've been trying to rest. I have a problem resting. Like, I don't know if anyone else has this problem. Like, I'll overdo it. Like, I'll try to take it easy and uh, only do like stretches and stuff. But even that, like, I'll overdo it. Like, I'll be stretching too much or like yesterday I was sitting on the, the Swiss ball. And I guess sitting on that thing wore me out because like the next day, like my hamstrings and my glutes and all this shit were just lit the fuck up. <laughs> oh, that is very painful. And it was so bad, like, they were so tight, it was, like, hurting my back. Like, my back felt like I was throwing my back out. I was like, oh my god, I need to chill. So I've just been trying to, like, take it easy and rest. Because I get kind of, like, I get hyper vigilant sometimes. I stay plugged in too long, or, like, I'm working too non-stop, or focusing too hard for too long, and... It's like every single day. And, uh... I try to, I try to, like... Take deliberate time and space away from everything. Where I shut it all off and I just sit down. And just, like... Reconnect to my, my own breath. Reconnect to my own, like... Because I notice, like, in my body I'll carry tension, like in my legs i i naturally feel like i'm more comfortable when i work out like at running like i feel like i'm more of a natural runner than than i am like than i ever have been at like weightlifting or weight resistance type training so having that like i guess that runner dna when i get stressed or tense like the fight or flight engages my run muscles oh like my legs start getting tense and tight and like I'll be bouncing my leg or something, getting ready for like a sprint. And I'll even be like walking, like with my left leg like like cocked, like like ready to take off, like for whatever reason. And uh I've only noticed that whenever I stop and I'm like, okay, what why do I feel so tense or why is my jaw clenched? And I just like move throughout my body finding out like where I'm holding the stress or the pressure and it's not like overtly painful or anything. It's like very easy to ignore after you've ignored it for so long. So I find it's like sometimes there's just like this low, low and dull, like knot or throb or something that I just need to just like massage or ice or heating pad or 
or just breathe consciously into it while like focusing my awareness there and just like feeling my heartbeat pump the blood and the necessary resources to like loosen that up and then also like I find sometimes it's not even me like I'm picking this up off of somebody around me who's who's like doing going through something or and it's not until like I get space a little later that I realize oh that wasn't even mine like I didn't even because I actually feel fine <laughs> and then sometimes it's just that just letting it go but <clears throat> sometimes when I'm working this stuff out it's not just gone like later I'll get another wave of it in like a an, an emotion like that'll well up or something and I try to make sure I have space in my schedule to where I can give that uh, emotion a place to naturally like seek its full conclusion I guess I, I want to give it space to breathe in the same way that's kind of why I like I'll do a video like I'll sit here and like stream or something like that and then I'll give it space to breathe as well. Like this stream here, you probably won't see what's coming out from this this stream, this video, for probably another week or so. And by that time, like I'm long past <laughs> what I was talking about or dealing with then. I heard something like, uh, what was it, Jeff Jeff Bezos maybe? Like probably not a comparison you want to draw. Like I don't know, I don't know personally. Like I don't have any research or vested interest in knowing who's who or what's what in in regards to like uh people's lifestyles and stuff like that i'm more concerned with my own and just taking what knowledge and wisdom i pick up along the way and incorporating it but i too i do try to like give give the what, what do you say give uh credit where credit's due um and i think it was jeff bezos that said uh a lot of the times that I'm getting congratulated for things that happened three quarters ago. Like I'm already working on the next, you know, the next quarter's business and work. And I've long since been past doing that. But it's still nice to hear the reassurance, like when it does come back around. And in some ways, like I can feel how this is applicable because like I my, myself have went through uh, a few journeys and, and done some things in my life that I, I, I'm pretty proud of that I think even anyone would be proud of if it was them. So like, I recognize that like, I, it was so weird to me whenever we would come back from deployments and like, I don't know, it wasn't like a, I guess it's, it, it's maybe what firemen and policemen feel, maybe even like some teachers feel this way, professors and stuff where uh, you get to see that growth. Once that growth occur occurs, you see the, the different person that comes out of it. And uh, I recognize that even in my own life, like I recognize how whenever I do grow, like I'm a different person that comes out on the other end. And it's like, you're giving thanks to someone that doesn't exist anymore, but I still appreciate it. <laughs> like, thank you very much. Um, it's good to see that like the message can resonate and I hope it helps somebody like I hope Anyone that just listens or watches what I'm doing and and I hope that empowers them to be a little bit more confident to do something in their world with what they're doing and That like it's okay to be in chaos and it's okay to be in the unknown And we can have tools to kind of like safeguard our spirit whenever we're in that chaos or when we're dealing with that unknown and it's all around centering yourself and connecting with like who you truly are without anyone telling you who that is or who you truly are before anyone told you your name was this name with this last name and you know you're from this place like there's a you even outside of all that and I feel like when we're when we're doing something like this like gaming is a good place where this occurs but I think also other extreme endeavors in the world, like at a certain point, the body gets out of the way and there's just an awareness that's taking over. And in some ways, like that awareness knows more than even we can. And the more you can kind of surrender to that. And, and I think the real the real pros do like they, they train just specifically, like just to be able to do this. like. That's the place where everything comes from. That's the place where we get cars and roads and even, I would say, mountains and trees. Like, but yeah. 
I tell my sons, I was like, everything you see in this room here, like whatever you're looking at to watch this video or any sound you hear, like it's all bouncing off and has come from someone's mind. It's like all this was a, a visual image before it became a three dimensional reality. And that's what's crazy is if, if you think about that, like we all have access to that thing that brings more things into this place. And uh, it don't matter what you believe, it's like we're all connected to it. And you can't deny it because when you hurt someone, it hurts you. And when you see someone succeed, somehow, like, you feel good. Like, somehow there's some joy in that. And if you don't feel good, maybe it's because you somehow see yourself succeeding if that were you. But you refuse to do what it takes to be that. That's a tough one. That's pretty tough. We like to say, oh, if only... A, a, if I was this and I was that, if I was here and I was there, then then I would. It's like, well, where are you right now? What are you right now? I'm always asking myself this. This is not me talking to anyone in specific. Like, honestly, like, I'm listening to this back right now just like you are. I'm like, well, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we filmed that. We said that. Well, what are you doing? When they look, what are they seeing? And I'm like, that that's hopefully what the what the, the message is. It's like, hopefully I'm practicing what I'm preaching. Hopefully I eat the dog food and it tastes good. Cause I made it. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Uh, the, the expression is, uh, this person really eats their own dog food. I'm like, uh, what? Why is that an expression? You eat pieces of shit for breakfast? <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, that was a reference. Anyways. I'd just rather play. I mean, all this is baked into it, I feel. In the same way that we can wirelessly communicate with our cell phones and each band of that signal carries information like a bucket that's then delivered to your screen and translated into the image that you see. I feel like when we have fun, that same information is contained within. And there need not be words to be said in order to describe it. And actually, I feel like even words to describe it somehow, uh, they do disservice to conveying the true message. Because it's like, I'm getting kind of uh, abstract, I think. But in my mind, How do I, how do I convey this? Like, I don't even, th that's just it. It's like, you can't, like, you can't convey real truth. Like, the reality that we live in, it's, it's like a hologram. It's not what's really true, but it's a hologram of what is true. And if you understand it for what it is, I think that somehow unlocks something. And... How do you understand it for what it like what would that mean to understand it for what it is um maybe you would find that there's no point in trying to define it because it's indescribable and there is no way other than just experiencing and interpreting that experience to prove that it is Ooh, ooh. sometimes i think it say stuff and i'm like I gotta Google that. I don't know what I'm saying here. What does this mean? And I do that with words. I noticed I do that with words. I was getting the word lugubrious mixed up with the word ebullient. I'd much rather be ebullient than lugubrious. Well, then I look it up and I'm like, what the fuck does that mean? Are we graduating? You see, you guys? You just gotta learn some three syllable words. You too can graduate to the Stalwart Vanguard, where we drive McLarens in a hypercar setting through traffic signs and stoplights and strip clubs 
We're going downtown. Oh, wait, hold up, hold up. It, uh, all right, okay, can I? Man. The whammons. The whammons, man. The whammons will be my downfall. Dun, da, da, dun, dun. Dun, da, 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 da. Oh! <laughs> yeah! Damn! Uh, oh, 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 oh! We were trying to break lap records, but I got distracted. It's pretty hard to maintain focus for a long period of time, especially if you're letting your mind wander and you're trying to have, like, deep and profound thoughts. I don't feel like I'm being deep or profound, though. Honestly, like, this is a vlog. I feel like I'm just, like, narrating my thoughts to myself so that I can listen back and see if I'm full of shit later. And then where I am is like, let's explore that. What sort of adversity have I faced that caused me to feel lesser that I'm hiding behind right now so that I can protect myself from an unseen threat and an unknown enemy that can potentially be in my path forever because it doesn't even exist. Show me a real thing and then I can get past it. It's like, oh, this is something here. Let me just, okay, now that's back there. We got past it, see? Rang a gang. It's weird because our thoughts work in a certain way, and I've heard Neuralink, the uh, brain machine interface that, uh, well, Neuralink, the, the company Neuralink's working on. Um, it's said to have uh, potentially been able to give the ability to communicate without needing to text or speak, like using your words. And I think in the same way, like, we can have different projections of who we are, like the me I'm presenting as the streamer here on this video, or the me who I know I truly am inside my head, or the me who shows up as my son's father or my, my wife's husband. Like, these versions of ourselves, in a way, are like those same filters we can hide behind to protect ourselves in certain situations, or uh, identify with so that we have that swaddling and that security of like, I belong somewhere. Um, I think that the neural link also will have the ability to separate out, separate out your different trains of thoughts in the same way that we do. And how is that gonna like make things easier? Like, I don't know, like it, it maybe eliminates all the, the necessity. We become telepathic like that, it's weird. I don't know how it's gonna look like what's the desktop of that <laughs> you know what i mean like are you getting a heads up display in your visual field like because the neural link it feels like a graphics card like you're gonna put a graphics card in your brain and uh your eyes are the monitor is that the case is am i even thinking about this right like i i wonder or is it gonna be some ex external peripheral that the neural link will sync up to to give you like a heads-up display because if you can get in the cornea if you can start rendering from the photoreceptors like what kind of ex i think that's what psycho psychedelics are doing psychedelics probably flood the photoreceptors and then you get like all kinds of spooky visual tomfoolery like is Neuralink gonna be able to do is that gonna be like something you could bluetooth to your car <laughs> This is serious though, like, because if you could do that, can you Bluetooth to a drone? Is there going to be drones flying around? People Bluetooth to drones over their head? They're playing uh, Path of Exile or Diablo IRL with a drone over their head, getting the, what is it, asynchronous camera? It's like, are people going to stop playing reality from the first person perspective? Are we gonna have people living in a world playing from third, third 3D, third, third person? 
It's gonna be like Fortnite. Are people running around like Fortnite? And what's crazy is like, if you can, if you're programming photo receptors, then you see that person in their Fortnite skin. Even if that's a real person right there. Look, I've had this idea. I like to call it Corgi Vision. So the idea is you can put these augments to your vision, whether it's like tapping it with Neuralink and directly altering the photoreceptors or like wearing an external Ray-Bans type situation. Um, I'm name dropping brands because I'm not formally, like I don't have any media training, nobody's paying me. Like I'm trying to get this shit going guys. I'm talking about it because it needs to live. But anyways, uh, Ray-Bans or even like inside your car, this windshield is augmented or these side views are augmented. And you see like the external HUD right here. You see the HUD that I have on my eyes through the windshield, right? Or in your eyeballs or on the Ray-Bans glasses. If this is the case, then like, I would be able to drive up to somebody else's car and activate Corgi vision. And instead of a race car, I see a giant Corgi that, that maybe barks like I, I, like a very non-threatening bark and I feel like this is the reality that we will eventually live in that will allow like I remember Halloween was coming by I was very in this like liminal phase of my life thinking about like how Halloween's kind of like the liminal phase of of like existence where things are supposed to be able to cross over and, and not be noticed like you'd be able to like uh, walk with the ghouls and the goblins and they'd be no different than you That's what corgi vision is that's corgi vision guys Imagine you're going into a very threatening supermarket where everybody's banging stuff and clicking things and beeping things and there's lights and it's cold by the freezer. I, that's gonna be the case anyway. It's always gonna be cold by the freezer, but it smells like fish. Well, you're probably still gonna smell the fish anyways, but what if you could switch to corgi vision, you know? And then those, the, the baby crying in the background is now a cute little Corey going, oh, oh. Because <laughs> there's always a baby in the background. No. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but for me, like, I used to think that my son Bluetoothed into my, my cortical stack or something. Because when he would cry, it would send me into such a trigger. Like, I'd become instantly, like, upregulated, ready to squash. Like, I need to smash something because it's just like the note that he would hit and it's so unfair because cats do the same thing a cat will sit there and meow at that same note that a baby cries and for me like that activates me and uh i gotta turn on corgi vision or something in my mind to, to kind of set up a barrier or a block to that and then also like if you live in a neighborhood where uh people are very proud of their sound systems or speakers and stuff you can feel the earth vibrating whenever they're parked or driving nearby. Corgi vision. Yeah, corgi vision. Now, that loud sound is canceled. And instead, like, you don't, you either don't, because there is a such thing as noise canceling, right? You don't hear anything. You still feel the vibrations. Maybe AI will get smart enough to put a brontosaurus there one day. Like, and you're like, oh, the vibrations are from the friendly brontosaurus. Da na 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 na. And you're just still having a good day. But yeah, this this feels like a necessity. In the same way that like we can have grocery stores that uh, are lined up and accommodated in such a way that it triggers the person into making more purchases on the spot. And that this is so intelligently designed that the owners go traveling to different parts of the world and pull out a measuring stick and ruler and measure the distance between the aisles to see why this business is so productive. Like in the same way that they can engineer your psychology against you, I feel we're at it. And this is a profound thought, guys. I hope you're still following. I feel we can program and set up everything in a way that it is non-triggering. Look Now look at this. Is that a unique thought or what? What if we know how well to get into somebody's mind that we don't? That we actually put in place protection to keep people from being susceptible to shit like this? I don't know. That's just me. I, I think my thoughts, I just try to drive my car and uh, ain't nobody special. But every once in a while, 
Every once in a while. We have a good one. I feel like that's a good one, guys. That's a good one. There are people that can benefit from this. I know I could. But I'm capable of masking at a pretty high level, so... I don't feel like... I, I'm at a point now where it's just like I'm just strong enough to deal with this. What hurts, though, is like I know people that aren't. And, and that sucks. Like, I don't know. I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. I'm not the only one thinking like this. Ring again, motherfucker! Start illing on him. <clears throat> Corgi vision. Corgi vision. A very simple way to get it started too. Y'all know Pokemon Go, right? It is not what I thought it was. Well, I thought Pokemon Go was like, you go walk around in the bushes and you will find a Pokemon. Like there will be one there. Instead you get the little avatar that's on like Google Maps. And then he's just like, I was kind of underwhelmed. I was like, this isn't Pokemon Go. Well, we need Pokemon Stay or po Pokemon Stop. Because the real one, has the physical Pokemon there that you can see, everybody can see. And a lot of them were left alone because they're pretty common, by the way. But you'll have like a bunch of common ones that's kind of like out in the environment like animals are. And what's cool about that is you walk up and battle one, but the battle's like actually taking place. Like in World of Warcraft, you have pet battles. Like, you can actually go to a player in World of Warcraft in a pet battle and see the battle going on. You can see them standing across from somebody else with two little pets in front of them. And then, like, or three little pets in front of them, one, and one of them fighting each other. And two, like, on the side, but they're all, like... And you can walk up to the battle, like, at a certain point you phase out. Like, if you get... If you try to stand in the middle of the battle or on the players, like... There's a such thing as instancing, where... It's, a. Uh, basically parallel realities different dimensions a player could be standing there within like a 20 foot radius they're in a different they're like in a a, a zone of uh what do you call it a zone of containment or an impenetrable soundproof barrier or something like they're in their own instance of a bubble having a, a pet battle like maybe you could implement something like that but and ai is really good guys with the graphic stuff ai is really good at that But yeah, I felt like that's the way it should be. 33 minutes and 30 seconds. We got to beat that next time. Now, with the McLaren, I think we could. I've got a feel for it after that race. I think I'll just retry. We got money in the bank. We need one more race. So we'll do another one. And then this should be able to buy our Coenisig. 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 Our Coenisig Regala. I forget the Rajario.